Hey, thank you so much. And thank you to the panelists for this excellent discussion. Um, I guess, let me let me throw out this question maybe to Ms. Smith. Um, you know, one, we've, we've dealt in some ways with, um, you know, basically jihadism on the web uh, as being a real threat uh, to our national security. And um, in some ways, this parallels what we see with QAnon. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy magical thinking. There's black and white morality um, plays and um, uh, conspiracy theories abound. And my understanding is that we've done a, a decent job in, in dealing with the social media influence of jihadism and, and ISIS to some extent. I'm not positive. If I'm correct about this, is there any lesson to learn from what we did there with, with this particular um, QAnon theory? Because I understand that um, intelligence agencies and other countries are actually actively thinking about dealing with it. Uh, um, maybe we aren't yet, but maybe we should, and I'd like to know how. That's a really great question. Thank you for that. Um, just one thing on the kind of potential restriction of jihadist content this is a different issue in my mind with jihadist content there was quite an easy yes and no game to be played with the content that needed to be swiftly taken down from social media platforms you know some of the most gruesome propaganda that we saw from groups like isis was violent and harmful and horrific in nature and quite clearly contravened community guidelines. The issue that we have with some of that content was that it fell in this gray area of, um, so for example, when ISIS recruiters realized that their um, potential recruits were being turned off by Greece and propaganda, they really pivoted and adapted into emphasizing the healthcare system and the education systems that had been set up in the territory that they um, were occupying. So the issue that we have with QAnon is this gray area. So much, such a vast proportion of this content does not violate community guidelines in any way. The platform actions that we've seen thus far specifically target violence-inducing content and harmful content. That is to say, in um, the words of the platforms, usually content that can induce real-world harm. It's a small proportion. So my, I am not a policymaker in this sense, and I have very few recommendations for how to restrict the amount of content that there is on the platforms that does not contravene community guidelines. But I would kind of repeat what I said earlier, that I think platform engineering really does play a large role in preventing the kind of rabbit hole that we're seeing of people being drawn into more and more content of the same nature. Got it. Let me just ask another quick uh, yes or no question. Can we rule out that there are any foreign actors that are fueling the QAnon uh, uh, social media conspiracy theories? Absolutely not. Okay, no. well, that, that was an easy, easy answer. And that's what I thought. I've noticed in, that the QAnon movement has spread to Europe um, I haven't seen it. Um, has it spread to Russia as well? That's a good question. I've researched QAnon in 27 different countries now on various different platforms. Obviously, the uh, data that we get is open source and available through public APIs. So the platforms that are used like VK are not necessarily ones that we have access to. That's kind of the, the Facebook equivalent in Russia. It's a good question. I would be surprised if there is no uh, conspiracy movement that it's, is at least adjacent to QAnon in Russia. But certainly the growth of QAnon in Europe has been astounding and rapid and terrifying. I, I, I would just say this is, Mr. Chairman, this is an excellent topic that we should drill down on as we get closer to the election. We've been talking about foreign influence and Russian influence, active influence. I'm concerned that it's playing a role here with QAnon. Finally, last question to anybody. Are there ways that we might be able to infect the conspiracy theory, um, the QAnon conspiracy web with other ideas or stories that could sow confusion and discord and cause it to collapse in on itself? In other words, kind of embed other crazy things that might pit groups against each other within the, uh, within the theories. Um, so 
I was just going to say briefly about about this, which is that um, one of the things that that might do on certain platforms is actually reinforce the circulation and uh, through algorithms and recommendation systems, because recommendation systems actually respond to that kind of excitement. And so there's an inverse system of rewards for the ways in which platform companies would react to that and then how it may or may not disrupt communities. One of the key features of this communities is just that they keep the conversation going. And so there's already a lot of back and forth and, and uh, chatter about what different things mean. Uh, this isn't a group that is like ideologically wedded to one specific idea. There is a part of it is the discussion itself. Well, thank you.